Spotlight, lectures and performances on and around Albany State University. Good morning, all. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you very much for turning out in mass for this International Education Week 2011. We are indeed very glad to have all of you here. And this year, we are especially uh, blessed to have the Early College, together with Ms. Harvey, the coordinator, uh, coming to grace our occasion. And we are really, really excited to have them. And in their coming, we are ensured that our future is bound to be filled with blessings and filled with uh, fulfilling the realization of object or the objective that we've started to pursue, which is the road to China. Um, in starting, I was simply, uh, before I get on to uh, introduce uh, our speaker, I want to first of all introduce um, some of the main concepts that we need to understand about today. Uh, today we are kicking off our International Education Week, and we need to understand the rationale behind the International Education Week. As Mayor Adams have said, we are up against a high competitive world, and the only way we can fit in is to make sure that we learn the culture and the languages of the competing world. We also need to have a peaceful world where we can coexist and uh, operate happily. And one of the things we want to make sure is that in acquiring your education, you acquire those intercultural skills that endows you with the knowledge, skills, and attitude that will make it possible for you to collaborate with the outside world. And so today, what we have is a reminder of the challenges of tomorrow. It's a reminder of our responsibility to be all against and ready to face the world of tomorrow. And we are very glad that all of you younger ones are here today. We are glad to have the Albany community, the, uh, the students of Albany State, and, um, and we want to make sure that in keeping with our um, objective, that we remind you of all the responsibilities. We use the week's celebration to remind everyone about the importance of international education. And this embodies every effort that we make to understand the world around us and appreciate our differences so that we achieve a lasting peace. And we also use this period to remind ourselves of the need to learn other languages. In planning the, in the International Education Week this year, the IEW committee deliberated on the national theme for this year. And the national theme for this year is international education, inspiring students locally to achieve nationally. And how can we uh, inspire our students locally, if not to remind them of their responsibility to get engaged in learning other cultures? This year, we agreed in our subcommittee that, our, that ASU sub-theme sub is going to be the road to China. Now, why are we choosing the road to China? If you all remember, towards the end of last year in 2010, President Obama started off an initiative, and this initiative is 100,000 initiative, 100,000 strong initiative to China. And why would he declare this initiative because he has seen the very great need for us, especially our present generation, to get to learn more about China, to get to learn more about the culture. And this initiative is to ensure that within the period of five years, we get 100,000 students from the U.S. studying in China. So as part of em embodying, as a part of participating in this initiative, we have also decided that our sub-theme is going to be the road to China, and that is to sensitize every one of us here 
about the need to begin to think about studying abroad in China, going to take courses, Chinese uh, courses, taking intercultural courses. And in this, in this same uh, spirit, we have a number of our faculty who are volunteering to take on study abroad to China. We have, for now, we have about five, uh, five faculty members who are in, intending to take their courses abroad to China. In fulfilling this objective then, we are also pleading with students to, within this week, because this week is also a recruitment week, to sign up for this study abroad. We have other study abroad program, but we are urging you to, to be there on Thursday when we do our intercultural week to sign up for these classes. Um, without uh, much ado, let me go straight to a uh, to talk about a little bit more about um, our guest speaker today. You'll be wondering why did we choose you know, to invite the Consul for Education, Chinese Consulate Office in Houston. That is also in keeping with our objective of moving on to China. His speech is gonna help to ginger us, to motivate us, and to help us to realize the need to stay steadfast with our goal of heading on to China. And uh, his presentation is ASU's first awareness program about China. And we are especially honored to have Mr. Lin Wei with us today. Mr. Wei is the Consul for Education in the Chinese Consulate General Office in Houston. He received his BA degree from Sh Shanghai. Shandong University, People's Republic of China, and an MA degree from Durham University, United Kingdom. He worked as the Deputy Director for International Affairs in Shandong University and was the first Secretary for Education in the Chinese embassies in Australia and United States. He also was the Director for Media and Information Resources for China Daily and the Director for China-US e-language programs in the Department of International Cooperation and Exchanges of Chinese, Chinese Ministry of Education. He works, his works include textbook translation from English to Chinese, understanding television, some collect collection of poems, he is also a poet, a traveler's experience and feelings, and life ring. Through some of his publications, Konzo Wei received an outstanding award from People's Daily in China and a second prize from Modern Poetry and Literature National uh, Competition. Konzo Wei is a member of the National Poets Association and board member of Shandong Tourist, um, uh, Tourist Association. Discussing with a uh, Konzo Wee yesterday, some of us were privileged to have a bird eye view of his philosophy and spiritual guidance. And we are very much honored and pleased to have him as our special keynote speaker. We, truly, we are truly honored and we please help in joining me to welcome to Albany State our special keynote speaker, Mr. Consul Wee. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. President Freeman and the Mayor, Mr. Davis. Ladies and gentlemen, friends. Yeah. It is my great pleasure to be on campus to share with you about China and about the Chinese culture. I have been to Georgia many, many times, to Atlanta, but it's my first time to Albany. And I received friendship from
from all of you. And from my talk with President Freeman and to Dr. Oscave and also Maggie as well, I learned a lot about your endeavor to internalization of your university. I remember that, you know, uh, in China, and the Chinese students, and my American students, and my America, while because America has two legs, one as you have U.S. currency. The other, you have English. Wherever you go, you can buy everything with U.S. currency. You can speak to anybody in English. If they do not speak English, they should find an interpreter for them. You know. And, uh, but why United States initiate the Education Week? When I was worked in Chinese Embassy in Washington, D.C. from 1997 to 2002, and United States realized that American kids know much less than the kids in other countries, especially in Asia, the kids in China, in Japan, in Singapore, you know, knows much, much more about the United States than the American kids know India, no China, no Korea. And for this, we did a pilot program and five experts from China, five experts from the United States to 10 schools in US and 10 schools in China with the same questions. How much do you know about China or how much do you know about U.S. Astonishingly, that American experts learn that Chinese kids know much more about U.S. and about history of the United States, about politicians, about the film stars, music stars, or sports stars, and about the geography of the United States. And whereas the United the, the case in United States, maybe that's the ten schools, and the first thing know about China is Yao Ming, because he played volleyball. Chinese, we call the volleyball in the NBA program. And the second is about Panda. And the third is about the Great War. And uh, may I ask how many of you have been to China? <laughs> yes, <laughs> great. Which cities have you been to? Beijing or Shanghai? <laughs> Beijing. <coughs> and uh, why I ask? Because, you know, and uh, Personally, I believe, and friendship lies understanding among peoples. And the friendship, just as we discussed yesterday, whether it's yellow flower, whether white flower, whether black flowers, we are all flowers in the same garden. We have the right freedom. We should receive the sunlight. We should receive the rains or share the rains all together. We should grow healthily together. And why United States initiated the program, I also remember Secretary Raleigh, you know, the Secretary for Education, once said that we have 25% of the American kids, but we have 100% of 
of America's future. I also remember President Obama you know, said that those countries who are learning from us today will take over us one day in the future. <coughs> and slices, I try to, you know, give, uh, because, you know, in talking is boring, as people see that, and once the talk should as short as the meniscus, you know. And I try to use more slides, pictures, to display the Chinese culture. This is Beijing, China, the capital. And slides. Wow, you see the people. <laughs> this is the 60 year anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic. You know, it's in October the 1st. If you go to Beijing, Beijing should look like this. Slides. And this is the, uh, do you know this place? Uh, okay. <laughs> this is uh, Shanghai. Uh, yes, yeah. And this is the uh, national emblem of China. Slides. And this is the uh, this is the uh, national um, anthem. Thank you, Anthem of China. And this is the Great War. This is the picture, you know. Uh, in, uh, in the follow, you will see another photo I, I took. You see the crowds of people. And photo again. This is Chinese martial arts. And the slides again, slides. Yeah, this is the Olympic Games. Yeah, slides. And this is the Shenzhou spacecraft. And, and this is Tiangong number one. And uh, going to the moon just a few days ago, China launched the spacecraft, uh, Tiangong number one. And this is the location, the, the, the map of the world. China. China is in the middle, and oh yeah, and this is China, and slides, and this regards to the history of China, five thousand years, and this is the 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 main entrance, the door of the Forbidden City. You could see the five. The, the nine bars orientally and uh, vertically, there should be a nine bars as well. That represents the, the highest rank. Only the emperor press can use that. Also the color of yellow, only the empress can use the yellow color. And this is the four uh, inventions of, you know, in China, the compass, gunpowder, printing, and paper making. And this is uh, on October the 1st, you know, Chairman Mao Zedong, our former chairman, you know, announced the founding of the People's Republic. And this is the national flag. And this is, you know, we have 23 provinces, like your state, and we have five, you know, autonomous regions and four municipalities, you know, like Beijing, Shanghai, Tianjin, and Chongqing. And uh, we have special autonomous uh, administration, special administrations, Hong Kong and Macau. 
and the population. China has the largest population. That's why our premier said, though China has achieved a lot, but if we divide it by, you know, 1.3 billion, you know, the number becomes very small. And this is, uh, and China, the, the largest pop the, the nationality is Han, but we have 56 ethnic groups. And this is the day. And this is the Mongolian. And this is the Miao. And this is Tibetan. And the language, a standard Chinese or Putonghua, is commonly used. And we speak the uh, simplified standard Chinese. But people in Hong Kong, in Taiwan speak the unsimplified, or in writing, not speaking the same, but in writing. And the religion, and most people in China believe in Buddhism. And some people, you know, believe in Doi's. And th there are many uh, Western or European churches as well in China, mainly in big cities. And the Chinese culture. And this old man, do you know this old man? Yeah, he's Confucius, you know, great philosopher and educator, scholar. And this is his statue. And, and this is his hometown. And uh, as you may know that Confucius, you know, traveled all over China, but you know, why he was alive, he was poor. But when he, after his death, and uh, most of the campers found that his philosopher doctrine is very useful for maintaining peace and development of the country. That's why, you know, they built the temple or the mansion, and this is the mansion. And the unique thing is the, the palace, you know, in, there are three, these great halls in China, and one is in Beijing, and uh, one in Mount Tai, one in Qufu, his hometown. But all those pillows only stand once. Only the Confucius mansion, the pillars is curved pillars with dragon and phoenix. Dragon, as you know, symbolizes the male and the femi female represents the phoenix. So each pillar with a phoenix, a dragon. When those emperors visit Confucius' hometown, they use yellow silk to cover the pillows, you know. And uh, Confucius' birthday is September 28th. There is a grand celebration on this day in the traditional way. And uh, Confucius quotes, you know, in practicing the roles of priority, harmony is the most valuable. So even now, China still very cherish the value of harmony, and there is a palace in China, harmony. We believe, and the people of the world should live together in harmony. And learn, uh, okay, okay. and uh, uh, Chinese names, and uh, uh, on my way, they also ask whether your name is Li Qing Wei or Wei Li Qing. I said in China, my name is Wei Li Qing because Chinese always cherished their family skin. You know, we put the family f name first and our name second. <coughs> and also a married woman keeps her maiden name, never change, you know. <coughs> You know, 
<laughs> the panda. Well, he's a really ambassador. And when we said to Ambassador Li Daoxing, and uh, the American asked, you, you are the American, you know, the Chinese American ambassador to the United States. And he replied, sorry, sir, I'm not the only ambassador. We have a number of ambassadors, Xiong Mao, you know, panda. Is you know enjoys much more privilege. You know the FedEx use a special plane. You know FedEx and transport the panda to U.S. And when the Washington do through the National Zoo opens, and uh, President Clinton and uh, you know and put it and uh, went to the zoo to you know to to visit the zoo. So he enjoys and much more. Uh, reputation in U.S. in the world, and also you know the martial arts. <laughs> you know the martial arts, <laughs> the kids practice. You know the Chinese films. Uh, yeah, you know a lot of Americans and people from other world. You know attend the programs in Songshan Shaolin Temple in Henan Province. And this is the Olympic Games. <laughs> and you recognize this is the American team. <laughs> and this is uh, the Bretton Nest and Olympic game facilities. And the Kubi, you know, water cubes. And, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> and this space craft <coughs> another photo yeah I took myself why I asked American friends to visit the the Great War if you come to the Great War, you will meet millions of people, you know, whether it's rain, whether it's snow, you know. But this is also part of China, why China built the wall across all over the northeast to west. Because, you know, in the Chinese history, the main, the, the Han nationality would refer to the, to the prior areas, you know, mi middle. And uh, I was invaded by minorities, you know, from the, the, the north. Because in the north, the weather was not suitable for human beings. And in winter time, they do not have enough food, you know. Uh, that's why they tried to come to the south, you know. And the battles, you know, between and the nationalities between Han nationality and the minorities. That's why the empress, you know, built the walls, try to prevent, you know, minorities coming from the north. And this is uh, the Forbidden City, and the uh, yellow color, and the marble stones. And uh, do you know where it is? This is from Warriors. This is from CIA. Why the American uh, president, when they come to China, they choose Beijing, the capital, to meet our uh, state leaders, then Shanghai, because a newly developed, largest you know, city in China, and CIA, because this is a historically city. And the uh, people in Sia always say that, you know, if you want to see the modern city, you go to Shenzhen. You know, Shenzhen is the youngest city in China because if you come to Shenzhen, you only meet people, you know, around 20 or 30 years ago, old. Not many children, no old people because the city was p built only about 20 or 30 years ago, but now it's the largest, one of the largest modern city. If you, s you want to see, you know, several, you know, uh, less than 100 years history, you come to Shanghai, 
you know, Shanghai is a very uh, quickly developed city and it's a very modern city. If you want to see 100 years history, you come to Beijing, the forbidden city, because the, the remains for the capital, since Jin and uh, Yuan, Ming, Qing dynasties. If you want to see the ancient city, you come to Xi'an. Xi'an used to be the capital for several, several decades, you know, 5,000 years history. So, uh, uh, Tarakat uh, soldiers or warriors and the Qin Shi Huang's tombs, the first emperor in Qin, and also the capital of Han Dynasty. You could find a lot of historical, you know, uh, relics uh, left by those dynasties. And this is also from uh, Xi'an, and used to have a station in Atlanta. Uh, this is Budala Palace, Tibet. And th this is a three goddess. This is the mountains. Uh, this is Huangshan. And this is Taishan. We have uh, five, we, ho we call them Holy Mountains, you know. Uh, um, and Zhongyue uh, Songshan, Shaolin Temple. This is Mount Tai, the head of five holy mountains. Why? Because it's called the head of five holy mountains. Because in Chinese perspective, we see the mountain, not only see the, the, the scenery, but also see the culture. Because all the way from bottom, the Mount Tai, there is the largest temple and to the mountain, to the top of Yu Huang, to the, the, the top. And with Chinese calligraphies, temples, you know, and, uh, and all the way up. And this is Huangshan. And this is Jiu uh, Jiaguo. This is mainly the scenic spot. And this is Judeco as well. And this is Lijiang in Yunnan province because Yunnan, the capital of Yunnan is called Kuiming and the nicknames the city of springs because only have one uh, season, spring. And the Chinese is economic and this is Shenzhen. And China's GDP only 1% of the world in 78, and now it's 5.3. And this is a global trade. And, and this is, a, we call the three dreams, you know, and my collection, you know, in the 1960s or 70s, when young couple get married, you know, the, 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 the 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 uh, the male part should prepare a watch, prepare a bicycle, and should prepare for the sewing machine for the wedding. But in U U.S., the 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 the, the uh, girls' part <laughs> should prepare. <coughs> and in the 1980s, you know, and to change, you should pro prepare television refrigerator and a washing machine. And then in the 90s, you know, 1990s, you know, another story, San Dajian, you know, telephone, computer, and air conditioner. And in morning days, and you should prepare three keys, a key to a car, a key to a house, and the key to happiness. <laughs> this is the most <laughs> difficult one. <laughs> and two basic conditions of China, large population and 
and development. As I also men mentioned to President Freeman this morning that and there is uh, a gap between the coastal areas and remote areas. And also there is uh, the gap between the developed areas, you know, and also the poor areas as well. And the Chinese P D GDP, you know, reached 5 point trillion to sound and ranking the second in the world. But also remind us that our Premier Wen Jiabao said if we divided 1.3 you know, billion people and the number, so China's per capita GDP you know, now is 95 you know, in the world. And China's central task to ensure substantial economic and social development and to improve the living standard of the people, especially the health care and uh, uh, or the medical care and education. And also I mentioned to President that uh, the U.S. education is about 80% of the national G GDP. But in China, we promised to raise to 4%, but we never get 4%. Only about, you know, 3 point something percent. However, Chinese families, you know, and uh, invest very, very much to kids. When from pre-kids, you know, and in the, um, uh, the invite tutors for violins, for arts, paintings, you know, all kinds of, you know, you know interest, develop the interest and the techniques. And uh, so we see that Chinese kids complain their school bags become heavier and heavier. We want to, you know, lighten their school bags. And uh, also we mentioned, I mentioned that, you know, in the United States, you know, uh, the classroom children only maybe 25, but in China, it's 60, even 70. And uh, they take turns because the classroom is too large to ad adjust their eyes. Otherwise, if you always sit far side in one place, it's not good. And also, those children who sit inside could not have time to go to the restroom because, you know, only 10 minutes, you know, break, but all of the kids, you know, and want to go to the restroom, those, most of the kids don't drink water just, you know, remain in the seat, you know, for the whole morning or whole afternoon. Uh, but why, you know, the uh, <coughs> test, you know, is good. And because of the families, because of the children, and because they know that if they want to have a bright future, they must work hard, study hard. <coughs> and Sino-U.S. relations. And China, you know, actually, before the founding of the United States, uh, before the founding of the People's Republic, and uh, the Chinese uh, leaders, you know, wish to have a good relations with the United States. But because of the various reasons, especially the war in Korea, so made the two countries, you know, never separate. Uh, not separate, but, you know, do not, you know, contact, have no relations or formal relations for a uh, number of years. And in the late, in the early 1970s, you know, 1971 and 72, both countries express the wish to normalize the relations 
And uh, this, I think, is uh, the ping pong. I think is, uh, and then how do we start? We start with the small ball to move the big ball. The small ball is ping pong tennis. The big ball is the globe, is the world. And slide. Yeah, and the American team playing ball. And and then uh, our former chairman in his later years meet meet Jiching first and have a dialogue and then and President Nixon with China in 1972, uh, I think. <coughs> and Nixon was the first American president to visit to China. This is our president doing life. La his later years meet President Nixon. Slice. Nixon said that what we do here can change the world. It is true. On January the 1st, 1979, and the both countries, you know, established diplomatic relations. And and uh, our former and uh, le leader Deng Xiaoping's visit to U.S. in 1979, and Deng Xiaoping visit and Houston as well, and the President Reagan and the Bush in China, and Clinton on the Great Wall with his family. And uh, Bush, little Bush, we call him, you know, <laughs> <laughs> meet our president who. <coughs> uh, and the dialogues between the two countries. And uh, currently we are preparing another di the, the, the conference. And uh, we have uh, more than 100, you know, member of delegation led by our uh, Minister Yang Jiechi for Foreign Affairs to U.S. on 22nd to College Station. And uh, President Hu Jintao and President Obama. <coughs> and China-U.S. cooperation. U.S. trade. 380 billion US dollars. This is the figure from us, from maybe from your side, is la larger. <coughs> and the sister relations is our mass task. <laughs> and uh, there are s 35 pairs of sisters. And y also some uh, state and the provinces establish relations, you know, together in education programs like scheduling program, you know, students exchange and online exchange. And China US education exchanges and the cooperation and the government programs and uh one is Fulbright program, you know, still there are about, you know, forty eight, you know, uh, scholars study in China, I mean Fulbrighters study in China, and the Chinese Fulbrighters, you know, study in U.S. And the Peace Corp programs, you know, they come to teach English language in uh, three provinces in one city in the southwest areas. And the U.S.-China language pro learning programs, as I mentioned that, <coughs> and China find that we have much more to learn from the United States in school, especially your problem solving, your creativity, and uh, your entrepreneurship, and also and, um, um, from early childhood, you are treated as 
no difference with the adult, but in China, you know, there are still a much difference between young kids and adult. For example, when important uh, guests come, you know, only maybe the important guests and the male can sit together, female or children should s sit in a different table, or, you know, this influence the child. And the American people learn that, you know, uh, feel that they should learn from China how they conduct their math and the science teaching because you know many Chinese, uh, most of the Chinese students and they want to learn science. They, because the, the unified national examination, you know, if you take science, you may it's good career for the female students. And that's why, you know, female students, you know, want to pick up math and science. So we adopt a program, we try to uh, videotape those master teachers classroom teaching and put it together into, into the program. Also, we found that, you know, uh, you please do not, you know, blame children, you know, they do not want to learn, you know. But when they are at a game, they are fond of game. Even parents, you know, want ask them to keep them, f uh, prevent them from game playing. Still, you know, they are so fond of game. If we divide, you know, develop a program like a game, and children will fond of the program. This is, and uh, what we are doing. And also, the uh, I mentioned the, the high level uh, dialogue mechanism. And uh, when I worked in Washington, D.C., the international uh, division of the Department of uh, Education is very small, only few people. Now they have a very large department now. And also our uh, vice minister and the deputy uh, secretary for education meet once a year to talk about in the human realities is changed, you know, like, you know, uh, programs like uh, students is changed, Dr. Osaki mentioned Obama initiated program to send uh, 100 students, uh, 100,000 students to China. And we will send, you know, uh, 10,000 government sponsored students to U.S. in five years. Currently, we have about 5,000 government-sponsored students. You know, we pay the money, you know, students. And also, we talk about the Confucius Institute program. Also, talked about the Linking Institute program in China. And we have a number of institutes or centers for American language and the literature. But now we have a, uh, a few Lincoln centers, you know, also study American culture. Uh, <coughs> and this is about the Chinese language teaching in the United States, you know. We have more than 300 Confucius Institute and uh, uh, three, more than 300 Confucius classrooms in the world. And we have 76 Confucius Institute in the United States. And the two countries have thousands of reasons to get even closer and to cooperate better on a win-win base. And the, the world is yours, the is ours as well. However, at last, it is yours. We have 25% of the American youth, but we have 100% American future. The good relationship between China and the United States not just benefit to the two peoples, but also to the peace and the prosperity of the world. And this is uh, the picture when attending the National Governors Association and Demise. <coughs> And this is my contact information. Thank you.